Hi, this is Dr. Justin. Thank you for subscribing to our video on female hormone balancing. The goal of the video is to provide you additional information in regards to what you can do to help balance your female hormones naturally. The goal is to give you some information on what the conventional approach is, to be able to compare and contrast to what the natural approach is, and so you understand what the underlying driving factors of your female hormone balancing are, and for you to walk away more educated, and feel more empowered to actually address the underlying cause of the problem. Again, ahead will be the video. For any questions, feel free and reach out to justinhealth.com and or email the office. Thanks. Enjoy the show. Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Thank you for subscribing to our Female Hormone Balancing Report. So in today's report, we're going to be going over essentially the underlying driving factors to female hormone imbalance. And again, some of the symptoms that result from imbalance of female hormones are fibroids, PMS, depression, infertility, PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, mood issues, breast tenderness, cramping. All of these symptoms are a result of imbalanced female hormones. And again, a lot of the times just taking hormones, even if they're bioidentical hormones, really does not get to the root cause if we're not addressing the underlying stressors that are pushing the hormones out of balance. So we're going to kind of really address things from a filter of what's the underlying factor and what are some natural things that you can do to essentially push the body into a state of healing while at the same time removing the roadblocks to healing. So first things first, let's go over what the normal female cycle looks like and just kind of do a little review of uh, physiology and how the cycle works. I find most women have absolutely no clue. So again, we have our upstream hormones in our pituitary. These are LH and FSH. So consider these, these are the hormones that are produced from our pituitary in our brain. Consider this like the conductor of an orchestra. So the conductor essentially is providing cues to whether it be the horns, the flutes, the strings, um, all of these various musical instruments are being guided by the conductor. So if the conductor's timing is off or he doesn't signal one group or the other, essentially we go from having a beautiful symphony to having noise. So the same thing that's happening here, we have these beautiful symphony of upstream hormones that signal down to our ovaries to produce hormones. So you can see the first half of our cycle, this is our follicular phase, and it's pretty much predominated upon by estrogen. And then we have the second half of our cycle, known as the luteal phase, which is pretty much predominated by progesterone. So as you can see here, when estrogen reaches its apex and begins to drop, this then signals a rise in progesterone. And all this signaling is by the upstream hormones. So estrogen drops, rise in progesterone, and this is the time of the month known as ovulation, usually between day 13 and 15, where actually you can get pregnant. It's the only time of the month where that happens. So as you can see above, the, the egg then comes out of the ovary, and if fertilization occurs due to intercourse, then you can have a child. And what you see here, if pregnancy were to happen, progesterone will continue to go up and up and up and up and off the charts. But as you can see here, if the egg is not fertilized, then what happens is progesterone starts to drop and decline. And progesterone and estrogen dropping actually signals your period to occur or menstruation. So once this drops, then what we're seeing here is a sloughing off of the endometrial lining, otherwise known as your period. And thus starts the, the next cycle here. The rise here would be day one all the way to day 13. And your average cycle is about 28 days. There can be some normal variation in there uh, a day or two either direction. But the key thing to notice is when we are stressed, one of the first things we see is a falling out of progesterone. And this can cause infertility. This can cause female hormone imbalances such as the PMS symptoms we may see, a breast tenderness, of migraine, headaches. Uh, of all kinds of sweet cravings, of energy issues. And one of the major reasons why we see progesterone fall out is because progesterone is actually the raw material precursor to cortisol. And cortisol has a couple of responsibilities to keep it simple. Its job is to help deal with inflammation 
and stress. And its job is also to deal with inflama um, essentially blood sugar stability and energy. So we have inflammation and stress on one side and blood sugar stability and energy on the other side. So if our blood sugar is off, if we're stressed, sleep stress, it could be food allergens, it can be infections, any type of stress is going to drive our progesterone to go to cortisol. And the solution really isn't just to take a whole bunch of progesterone cream or a whole bunch of hormone. It's really to get to the root issue. And there are some natural plant-based programs we can do to help push the body back on track and support this uh, with herbs and bioidentical support in a natural way. And again here, one of the major things that happens when progesterone falls out in the, in the second half of the cycle is we go into a state of estrogen dominance. So normal hormone balance, we have about 23 to 25 times more progesterone in our system than estrogen. This is a normal hormonal balance. And when our progesterone starts going down to cortisol, we enter a state of what's known as estrogen dominance. So as you can see here, we go from the estrogen dominant slide, we have a little bit more estrogen than progesterone. As you can see though, progesterone still predominates, but if you go back here, we have more progesterone in relation to estrogen that 23 to 24 to 25 times more, and then we tip it in its favor. And again, estrogen's main job is growth mediation. So the first half of the cycle, we're thickening that uterine lining. So estrogen's really important, but at the same time, if we overdo it and go into a state of estrogen dominance, we can end up with things like endometriosis. We can end up with fibroids. We can end up with all kinds of mood-related issues because our progesterone is dropping out. And again, progesterone is really important for healthy pregnancy. If you just break the word down, progesterone, pro meaning pro and gestation, gestation, pregnancy. So again, we really want to have a healthy balance there. And again, we're being attacked by estrogens in our environment, whether it be from plastics, phthalates, um, bisphenol A, PCBs, pesticides. All of these things are essentially estrogen metabolites and can throw our balance off even more in the favor of this estrogen dominance depiction you see here. So again, here's a, a month-long panel we did on a patient. So as you can see, normal variation is we have an, a rise of estrogen for the first half of the cycle and then it drops for the second. So we can actually do these month-long panels and look at our patients and do a sample every other day and see exactly how their hormones fall. So you can see this person goes down, up, down, up, down, and it's all over the place. We don't see this gentle rise in the first half and then a dropping out. We see this erratic up and down throughout the cycle. So imagine every single spike and drop as being a really bad day or maybe a really bad migraine or a really bad mood swing. So as you can see, there's a lot we can do to help push this cycle back into a normal variation. And this is estrogen. So this is our estrogen side of the uh, hormonal tree. And then below is progesterone. So as you can see, progesterone normally looks like this. We see the rise in the second half of the cycle. But as you see here, we have this up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down and where the normal variation should be smooth and then rising in the second half. So again, every up and down is a really bad day, is a really bad mood swing, potentially a really bad migraine. So we want to do our best to address this. And again, the conventional modalities we have to treat this are usually a birth control pill, which essentially is going to level everything out. Um, so how that works is we have estrogen here. We have this natural rise and fall. All a birth control is going to do is just flatline this across the board. And then you have your, your water pills at the end where then you take those to allow it to drop so you can bleed. So basically the orchestra we talked about, the FSH and the LH, the birth control pill essentially shuts down that beautiful orchestra. And we don't have this nice up and down cycle that we'd have in a healthy cycling female. So again, not the best option long term. It really disrupts our, our natural monthly cycle. And the next option that's thrown at you is a antidepressant. And again, our hormones are intimately tied to our neuro neurochemicals like dopamine and GABA and serotonin. So if our hormones are off, our mood's going to be off as well. Any female that has PMS knows they don't feel too good around that time of the month. So again, the underlying cause is the hormonal imbalance. It isn't a lack in some type of medication like um, Ambien or Ambien's a nighttime medication. Any type of your SSRI medication that affects serotonin, whether it be Zoloft or Wellbutrin or Paxil. Again, the deficiency is really in the female hormone balancing, so that's what we have to fix. If you fix the hormones, the mood comes along naturally. 
So again, we have our adrenal glands, which play a very important role in our female hormones. It's often neglected in medicine, but our adrenals are really the backup generator to all of our female hormones. Especially once you hit menopause, if your female hormones start to decline, which they do naturally in menopause, our adrenals become dependent upon to produce the majority of all our hormones. So we need strong adrenal glands. We need strong adrenal glands while we're cycling and or perimenopausal, but we need them even more when we're menopausal so we can transition into menopause without all these symptoms, without the memory issues, the skin issue, the hot flashes, the mood issues. So it's even more vital. So think of your adrenals as the backup generator. So if we have a backup generator in our house and the power goes out, if that generator is fully charged, there's no problem. The lights stay on, the TV stays on, not an issue. But if the generator is on low or empty and the power goes out, what's going to happen? The generator is pretty much useless. So think of this generator as your adrenal. So if our adrenals are depleted, especially as we start entering our 40s and 50s, we're going to have more and more issues. So this slide is a little confusing here. I'm going to break it down and make it really simple. So essentially, we have our hypothalamus up here. Just think of this as your brain. So we have our HPA axis, and we have our HPT axis. So hypothalamic pituitary adrenal, hypothalamic pituitary thyroid. And again, our brains then communicate to our organs here, whether it be our adrenals on one side or our thyroid on the other. And we have these feedback loops that go back and forth. And there's, think of them as a thermostat in the room. If the thermostat's set for 70 degrees and the temperature gets too hot, the air conditioning goes on. And if it gets too cold, the heat goes on. So these feedback loops are really important to help communicate back and forth. Healthy communication between the glands is, is always better. I mean, you can think of any relationship in your life where communication is good. Usually there's a healthy relationship there. So again, our adrenal glands are producing a couple different hormones here. We're making sex hormones, DHEA, pregnenolone, um, progesterone, our estrogens. And again, we're also making cortisol. So our sex hormones help reproduce us and build us back up and help with our healthy cycle month to month. And cortisol, again, helps with two simplified uh, benefits, which would be inflammation and stress and blood sugar and energy. And we have our thyroid on the other side that makes T4, which is inactive thyroid hormone, and helps convert it to T3. And actually, healthy cortisol balance is vital for T4 to T3 con conversion. So if we're making a whole bunch of cortisol because we're really stressed, that's actually going to inhibit this conversion. And if we're making too low cortisol because we've been stressed for too long, we're not going to get conversion either way. So we need healthy cortisol, healthy adrenal balance for optimal thyroid function. That's why anytime you have a thyroid problem, you have to look at the adrenals. And anytime you have an adrenal issue, it's good to look at the thyroid because they are intimately connected and your adrenals are intimately connected to your female hormones. So if you want to look a little deeper, feel free and check out our thyroid report video, which will give you more in-depth information on the thyroid. And again, a lot of this information you will see is overlap, but it's intimately connected and you need to have that background to know what's going on. So again, if we're having issues here, stress issues, whether it's blood sugar issues, again, infections, emotional issues, heavy metals, toxins, all of these things can essentially disrupt our feedback loops. And this, when the stress is activated, it's signaled by the shaking there on the PowerPoint. And as you can see, our thermostats become broken, so our feedback loops become turned off. And if we have bad communication in a relationship, usually it's not a good thing. So what we see is our feedback loops for our adrenals and our thyroid are disrupted. We stop making as many sex hormones because the body is always hardwired to deal with stress over reproduction. It's, it's our, in our genetics. And again, what we see here is our thyroid conversion decreases and we start making more reverse T3, which is our natural break. This is how our metabolism slows down because the body's saying, hey, we're in stress. Let's not worry about having good energy. Let's just worry about surviving. And so the whole goal really is to remove the stressors to get the feedback loops working properly. So as you can see, this is the ultimate goal. Address the stressors, fix the underlying issue, do an adrenal and or thyroid slash female hormone balancing program to help push the body into healing while removing the roadblocks. So again, recap, here we are. Our stressors are activated. Our feedback loops are disrupted. The goal really is to go from here, again, to getting communication back online. So again, our adrenals function on a light and dark rhythm. This is known as a circadian rhythm. So as you can see here, we have the highest amount of cortisol 
in the morning. This helps us get up and, and be active and, and get to work and do what we got to do. And then cortisol drops throughout the day and it's at the lowest at nighttime so we can go to sleep. Because if we have a whole bunch of energy at night, it's going to be very hard to sleep. So we have this normal ebb and flow of high in the morning and then this nice taper throughout the day. So we actually do specific adrenal tests, um, at-home tests, where you can look at your cortisol rhythm. And this is really important. Uh, a couple things we look at. We look at, is the rhythm just low? Is it low across the whole day? Is it high across the whole day? And is it somewhere in between where it's dropping or going back and forth? So we're looking at those three major things. Is the rhythm off? Is the amount high? Or is the amount low? So here are some actual adrenal tests. So as you can see, we have red is high normal, green is low normal, and our patient, you can see, is way up here. So the numbers that correlate are over here as well. So very high, very high, and then actually very low. So we go high, high, low. So this is a rhythm problem across the board. And as you can see, we're making a whole bunch of cortisol, very high, which again will also affect our thyroid. Another test here as well, we have a second patient where high normal is here, low normal is in the green, and our patient is just below low normal. So she has the rhythms good. It's high, low, lower, lowest, but the amount is actually low across the board. So this person may have fatigue, may have energy issues, and we may actually see some progesterone issues in the second half of the cycle because her progesterone has been depleted to cortisol. And now the cortisol system is becoming dysregulated and fatigued. So again, hormonal balance. What does this look like? Well, we have gland function on the left, and we have our patient becoming older here. So as we get older, our ovaries stop functioning optimally. And it's important. If our adrenals are healthy, they kick up, and they end up taking a lot of the slack. So if we're at this point where our adrenals are high, we're going to have hormonal harmony, a good balance, because our adrenals are kicking in and making some of our DHEA and progesterone and estrogen. So we have a good hormonal reservoir as we get older. Now. We have hormonal imbalance over here, so gland function on the left, age on the right. As our ovaries stop functioning, if our adrenals can't kick it up, what we have is a whole bunch of symptoms here. And again, once we hit menopause, it really turns ugly. This is where the hot flashes come in. This is where a lot of the mood, memory problems, and skin and hair issues really step it up. So we want to do our best to fix this and get our adrenals up into nice balanced levels. So this slide's a little bit confusing here. We're looking at our steroid hormone synthesis pathway. So again, all of our hormones actually come from cholesterol. So eating healthy fats and protein are vital to healthy hormonal balance. It sounds a little counterintuitive, but it's very much true here. So as you can see, all of our hormones go from cholesterol to pregnenolone. And pregnenolone is known as the mother of all hormones. As you can see, pregnenolone can then go to our stress hormones, cortisol or cortisone. It can go to our female hormones, such as progesterone and estrogen. And it can also go to our androgen hormones, such as testosterone. And even females are going to have a little more testosterone, but just more of a balance of our female hormones than our male hormones. So what happens when we have a stress response, what you're going to see is our little lightning bolt signal stress, and we're making more of our cholesterol and pregnenolone and our progesterone into cortisol. This pathway, see the dark line? This is showing an upregulation in this pathway. So what we start to see is more cortisol is becoming made and less of our female and even our androgen hormones decline. Now, if we don't address the stressor, what starts to happen over time is even our cortisol starts to decline. So that's why if we have high cortisol or even low cortisol, it can still affect thyroid function. So the goal really is to remove the stressor. Once the stressor is removed, we can start to lower cortisol again and get the anabolic side of our hormone chain uh, upregulated. So this is a little confusing. I'm going to break it down and make it more simple here. So again, we have our hormone pool here. This is our substrate in which all of our hormones are made from. Now it can go in one of two directions. It can go into stress hormones or our anti-aging hormones. So if we have stress, what happens? Stress hormones start to accumulate. The goal really is to remove the stressors. When the stressors are removed, remember this could be blood sugar issues, emotional stress, infections, environmental stress. Once that stressor is removed, watch what happens. Our stress hormones start to go back into balance, and we see more anti-aging or rebuilding hormones, so we age more gracefully and healthfully as we get older, which is the ideal goal. So again, we have our chief female hormones, estrogen and progesterone. And these hormones have an intimate connection on serotonin, dopamine, and GABA levels. So these are our neurotransmitters that affect our mood.
So that's why antidepressants are commonly recommended with female hormone imbalances because these hormones affect our neurochemicals. So serotonin is strongly linked with depression. Uh, dopamine is strongly linked with focus and attention. And GABA is strongly uh, related to relaxation or anxiety. So again, if we have hormonal imbalances, our mood is going to be thrown way off. So again, the goal really is to get these hormones back into balance naturally, and then mood is taking care of itself. Remember, the antidepressants cannot fix the underlying hormonal imbalances. So again, this is us maybe at various parts of our cycle. We look good. We feel good. Now, if our hormones go out of balance, estrogen and progesterone, that's going to affect our neurochemicals. And what we're going to see is we go from looking like this and feeling like this to maybe feeling like this. Again, not feeling too good, uh, feeling like we're going to pull our hair out. Maybe over time we gain weight and not look as good either. But that's intimately tied to the hormones, which then affect our neurotransmitters. So action items here. Again, get your adrenal and female hormones assessed. You never want to look at your female hormones in isolation because the adrenals and female hormones are intimately connected. Again, we want to look at the root of the situation here. So it's very important that we do a thorough job. If you don't, assess properly, then you're just guessing. If you're not assessing, you're guessing. So evaluate where stress is coming from. We have our three major categories where stress comes from, emotional, physical, or chemical. So chemical could be blood sugar issues. It could be infections. It could be uh, exposure to environmental chemicals. On the emotional side, we have stress from work or being in a relationship. And physical sides could be chronic pain and inflammation. If you're in chronic pain, your body's going to be making more cortisol, and it's, that cortisol is going to come from progesterone. So you may knock down your progesterone from just being in chronic pain situation. It's very possible. Again, go to justinhealth.com and feel free and click on the Become a Patient box, and you'll get my initial patient paperwork emailed to you with a metabolic assessment where we can at least go over that for 15 minutes, complimentary, no obligation, and at least go over you know, what your options are and figure out what the next steps are that you have to take are to help yourself get better. And again, you're only one decision away from getting your health back. You're only one decision away. So no matter where you were in your past, I try to go over elaborately here um, how the physiology works, kind of what the roadblocks to your potential underlying hormonal imbalances may be. Feel free and get the complimentary no obligation consult. We can at least map out a plan. So again, if, if, you're, if you want to get to a certain spot in your health, you have to know where you are first on the map. Once you know where point A is, then you can get to point B. And this information and in creating a plan gives you the best opportunity to get to where you want to be. So feel free to visit justinhealth.com. We have YouTube videos and blogs and newsletters there as well so you can get more information. Uh, I hope you enjoyed all of this information. Any questions, feel free to call or email the office. Thanks, and have a great day.